So afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day so far and enjoying the sessions um, and not feeling too overwhelmed. Well, so we made it to the halfway mark, so congratulations, you all. <laughs> so for today's afternoon session, I'm going to be covering the analysis of ventilator-associated events and uh, the new module of pediatric ventilator-associated events. Um, VAE analysis is very similar to the other device-associated analysis, like central line-associated BSIs and catheter-associated UTIs. So some of this will look familiar. So let's begin. At the end of today's session, I really hope that you would leave with an understanding of the standardized infection ratio and its use in the interpretation of ventilator-associated events, or VAEs. Be able to explain the SIR in the analysis reports within NHSN and interpret those results to your coworkers or your facility. And finally, be able to understand the new pediatric ventilator associated events module. And through this training, I want to be able to provide you with the tools necessary to use your NHSN data to motivate infection control pra practices in your facility. So let's start off with VAE. Ventilator-associated reports are located within the device-associated module, just like CLAPSI and um, CAUTI. The report options are also very similar. The first screenshot shows where VAE and PVAE are located within the analysis tree view. The screenshot to the right shows the different options available specifically for VAE. In the next couple of slides, I will go over these different options and the expected results. Like mentioned before, the line list option will provide a detailed look at your events for that specific HAI type. The VAE analysis list will also provide details of that specific type of VAE event, may it be an infection-related ventilator-associated complication, IVAC, a ventilator-associated condition, VAC, or a possible ventilator-associated pneumonia or PVAP event. The next option you'll be able to run is their frequency table. Frequency tables provide a visual representation of your location specific event counts for that event type. One important thing to note about the frequency table is the option to see the events that contribute to the total VAE count. We'll take a look at the frequency table in the next slide. And lastly, we have bar, bar charts and pie charts and that provides a graphical representation of the VAE data, which we'll look at also. Here's an example of the frequency table. As you can see, it provides a table view of location-specific event counts. The columns are separated by the specific VAE event, P PVAP, VAC, or IVAC. The percentages below the event counts represent the percentages based on the frequency, the row, or the column. This report is a great resource for quickly viewing your numerator count for the VAE SIR and the rate tables. Now moving on to the bar chart, here's an example how the bar chart is visualized in NHSN. As you can see, this chart is stratified according to the specific type of VAE event. Then the individual columns are further stratified by the unit type. This will provide a graphic for how each location is contributing to that overall specific event count. And as you can see from this example, the ICU-A location is heavily contributing to the overall count for IVAC, PVAP, and VAC. So this is a great source for when you're presenting your data. The next report um, available for VAE analysis are the EMV, or Episodes of Mechanical Ventilation, rate tables. The EMV rate tables are similar to the VAE uh, regular ventilator rate tables in that they provide unit level data for EMV. The EMV denominator of the rate calculation represents the sum of the number of episodes of mechanical ventilation that occurred in that location for the month. So the calculation would be the number of VAEs divided by the number of, number of VAEs divided by the number of EMVs multiplied by 100. And lastly, we have the ventilator SIRs, SURs, and rate table options. 
The ventilator SIR is available for acute care hospitals, critical access hospitals, and long-term acute care hospitals. Each of these settings types have their own different risk adjustment, and we will, we will be covering that later on. The VAE SUR table is a summary measure used to track device use over time. The SUR compares the actual number of ventilator days to what, was, what would be predicted given a standard population. The SUR tables are also available for the same setting types as the SIR tables. And finally, the ventilator days rate tables. The VAE rate tables provides um, location level event counts, device days, patient days, device utilization, and the VAE category. As you can see in the screenshot to the right, the rate tables are separated by CDC location, not your specific unit type. The, the boxed areas is where you can see the tables um, specifying that CDC location. The vent days rate is calculated by taking the VAE count dividing it by the vent days and multiplying by 1,000. The utilization ratio is calculated by taking the unit level vent days and dividing it by the patient days. I would also like to point out one restriction that you all may be aware of, that using the rates, um, they can only be calculated at unit level, which is why we recommend that you run the SIR um, tables, which are not bound by that same restriction. Like the other analysis options for VAE, the rate tables are also stratified by the VAE category. Within the table, the values will be either total VAE, total IVAC plus, or total VAP. So I'm pretty sure you haven't seen the slide before. So a review of the standardized infection ratio, I won't be spending time on this slide that much, but the SIR is the observed number of HAIs divided by the predicted number of HAIs. And this measure is used to compare the HAI experience among one or more groups to a group of patients to a standard population. So the VAE SIR is calculated in two categories. There's the total VAE SIR and the IVAC plus SIR. They both use the same negative binomial regression model like I covered in the device associated um, analysis presentation, this sl side slide di displays a negative binomial regression model. It has the alpha, which is the intercept, the beta value, which is the parameter estimates, the x value, which represents the presence or absence of the risk factor, and an i, which is the number of predictors. So here are the risk factors in the total VAE models for all facility types. For acute care facilities, the following risk factors were found to be significant for the total VAE model, CDC location, medical school affiliation, and facility bed size, and facility type. The medical school affiliation and facility bed size are derived from the annual survey. For critical access hospitals, the VAE model is intercept only which means that there were no significant risk factors that were identified during the statistical analysis. And finally, for long-term acute care facilities, the following risk factors were found to be significant. CDC location, facility bed size, proportion of admissions on hemodialysis, proportion of admission, admissions on a ventilator, and average length of stay. The last four factors are derived from the annual survey. And the proportion of annual admissions on a ventilator or hemodialysis is calculated as the number of admissions on a ventilator or hemodialysis divided by the total number of annual admissions. And the average length of stay is calculated by taking the annual number of patient days divided by the annual admissions. So here is the model for total VAE for long-term acute care um, facilities. It's calculated under the 2015 baseline. It's risk adjusted on these following variables. We have our intercept value, which is negative 8.3689. Then we have facility bed size, with the referent value being less than 32 beds. Then we have proportion of admissions on hemodialysis. Your referent value is those less than or equal to 0.11. Then proportion of admissions on a ventilator, your referent value being less than 0.18 then your location type or ICU award, and your average length of stay. Also, like mentioned before, 
as of October 1st, 2018, the LTCH QR program is no longer requiring LTAX to submit BAE data, but your state may have different requirements and different qualifications for their program. So you would need to check with your HEI coordinator for that. Now here are the risk factors that are included in the IVAC plus model by facility type. For acute care facilities, the following risk factors were found to be significant. CDC location, medical school affiliation, and facility bed size, with medical school affiliation and facility bed size coming from your annual survey. For long-term acute care hospitals, it was a facility bed size, proportion of admissions on a ventilator, and average length of stay. Proportion of annual admissions on a ventilator is calculated as number of admissions on a ventilator divided by the total number of annual admissions. Average length of stay is number of annual patient days divided by annual admissions. So this is the, uh, take, we're going to take a look at the IVAC plus um, model for long-term acute care hospitals. The intercept for this model is negative 9.9593. Then you have facility bed size. Then you have a pr proportion of emission on ventilator and your average um, length of stay. We also get questions like we did earlier on about why there isn't specific PVAP SIRs or IVAC SIRs. And the reason for this is that during the 2015 baseline, there was a small population for each of those um, different event types. And we did have a working group that came together and determined that taking into consideration the protocol and the analysis piece of this of these different events, it would better analyzed included within the other SIR options, such as total VAE or IVAC plus. So here is the output for total VAE for the device associated module. The top portion of the table provides the table name and the modification criteria. The analysis portion of the table provides the data elements. It also provides which VAE category is for this um, specific analysis. Below the table is the footnotes portion of the slide. As you can see, there are important inf information included in the footnotes, such as this is for in-plan VAE data only, and it excludes chronic care locations. Also, the SIR will not be calculated if the number predicted is less, is less than one and that the lower bound of the 95% confidence interval is only calculated when the number of observed events is greater than zero. There's also a bullet point that describes the factors that are included in the model. The total VAE SIR includes events identified as ventilator associated condition VAC, IVAC, and PVAP. As you can see from the table for 2018, this facility had five events that meant met the total VAE category. The number of predicted events for this facility, taking in, into account all those risk factors, was 1.974. So taking that and your infection count, your SIR would be 2.532, which signifies that during this time period, our facility identified more VAE events than what was predicted. However, because the p-value is above 0.05, and the 95% confidence interval does include the value of one, we can conclude that we don't have enough evidence that this facility observes statistically significant, significantly more VAE events than what was predicted. Now here is your IVAC um, plus SIR output. As you can see, it's very similar to the total VAE output, the only difference being the VAE category, which identifies that this is IVAC plus. As you can see, since the number predicted is less than one, there is no SIR, no p-value, and no 95% confidence interval. So now I have a question for you. VAE rate tables provide event level summary data and device utilization for facility-wide and location level VAE data. Is this true or is this false? I'll give you all a couple more seconds. So the correct answer is, let's see the results. It is false. Let's take a look at why. So remember, 
Rate tables only provide data at location level, not facility-wide. SIR reports, however, will analyze and provide facility-wide data. All right, now let's take a look at P Pediatric VAE, our new module. Pediatric VAE reports include line lists, frequency tables, bar and pie charts, and the main analysis tables of, the, of pediatric VAE are our rate tables. There's rate tables for ventilator days and EMV tables for NICU locations and all other qualifying locations. At this time, there are no SIR tables available for pediatric VAE. The report modification is the same process as you would be modifying other HAI types. You have your, for your rate tables, you have your title, your time period, filters, and display options. So this should all look very familiar. And let's take a look at the PDVAE ventilator rate table for ICU other locations. It provides, again, unit level data. The PDVAE rate is calculated by taking the event count and dividing it by the number of event days and multiplying it by a thousand. This specific location had a PDVAE rate of 18.182 per 1,000 ventilator days for the month of January 2019. At the end of the table is the ventilator ut utilization ratio, which is the number of ventilator days divided by the number of patient days. Now your ventilator days rate tables for NICUs works a little bit differently. These are unit specific rate data, but they're also divided by the birth weight code. The PVA rate for NICU locations is calculated the same way as the other ICU other uh, table. It would be your PDVAE count divided by your number of vet days times 1,000. For this specific example, the NICU location for birth weight code A has a PVA rate of 11.765 per 1,000 ventilator days. And your utilization ratio is calculated number of vent days divided by number of patient days. Now moving on, there's the, there's the option of running your PVA EMV rate tables. This provides your rate level data for episodes of mechanical ventilation for ICU and other locations. The rate per 100 episodes of mechanical ventilation is calculated by taking your PDVAE count and dividing it by the episodes of mechanical ventilation and multiplying it by 100. The reason why we use 100 as your multiplier for the EMV rate tables is because the, den the denominator is so small, which is your EMV episodes. The PDVAE NICU EMV table is calculated at the location and the birth weight code. The rate per episodes of mechanical ventilation is calculated by taking your PDVAE count, dividing it by your episodes of mechanical ventilation, and timesing it by 100. As you can see for birth weight code B for January 2019, this location had a EMV, PDVAE EMV rate as 33.333. Here are some resources for VAE analysis, and they will be helpful to you when you're analyzing your NHSN data. And this brings us to the end of this today's session. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And if you have any questions, I'll take them now. And if not, you can email us at nhsn at cdc.gov. Thank you all, and have a great rest of the week.